How hard can it be to make an ancient Roman super mill? Oh, let's make some bread, baby. Hey there, I'm Sabrina Cruz, and this is History Remade with Sabrina. Today we're remaking the 16 Roman water mills of Barbagall. Let's do this. How much do you actually know about water mills? Because before this video, I thought of them as these quaint constructions in countrysides. Cute, but kind of primitive. Little did I know that water mills redefined work. Water mills can be dated back to the 3rd century BCE in the Greek province of Byzantium. We know about this thanks to the writings of Philo, a Greek engineer who produced the earliest known recordings of water mills and the mechanical principles behind them. But it was only when the Romans refined the technology that we saw a significant rise in efficiency. A single mill could perform the labor of dozens of men. This rise in mechanical efficiency opened the possibility for the Romans to spread the use of water mills across their empire and transition away from their main source of energy enslaved people. It's a possibility that this transition could have been made out of goodwill, but when it happened, it was likely just done because of a shortage of enslaved people. Despite this, the effect was the same. Thanks to the spread of the Roman water mill, at least up until the European Dark Ages, the automation brought by the water mill meant less people needed to mill grain by hand, redefining the way they worked. All right, so we are going to remake the Roman water mills of Barbagall. Constructed around the fourth century CE, this mega factory was made of 16 water mills on a hillside and was capable of producing 25 metric tons of flour every day. That's enough to feed 27,000 people. The original site featured a hill dropping 20 meters over 40-ish meters. We're gonna scale that down to about 3% for the sake of common sense. So how do we do this? With every build, we're gonna be focusing on exploring time-accurate techniques over time-accurate materials. So we're going to use things that you could grab at your local hardware or craft store. For this build, we're going to be using the following. So a water mill uses water to rotate a wheel. That rotational power gets translated across some gears until it rotates a millstone, which grinds up grain to get flour. Now the Roman water mills of Barbagall are basically just 16 of those things. The process of actually making them breaks down into five steps. Finding a water source, getting the water wheel, getting in gear, making the mill, and putting it all together. Let's start with step one, finding a water source. Now the genius behind water mills is that they replace human or animal labor with the natural movement of water. Now this requirement for moving water usually meant that water mills needed to be built by rivers or streams, but the resulting landscape might be restrictive for more ambitious factory designs. But luckily the Romans were experts at creating their own currents. You may have heard of the Roman aqueducts. These impressive structures brought fresh water to city populations and directed the water that powered the mills. They did so using clever channeling, gravity, and Roman ingenuity. Except I'm not Roman, so no aqueducts for today. Maybe next time. But for now, we've got an aquarium water pump to make our moving water. It's really important that our water flows downhill, so we could just make a hill. I mean, it's just gonna be a right angle triangle, but big. Yeah, there's 16 water mills. Let's just assemble it. For context, we're essentially making a staircase for the water mills to sit on. Can you step over here and hold this thing level? Come on around, friend. Why do you keep trying to build things that aren't the thing we're building? You do the last one. A hill! Engineering. So this water pump that I got says that it could push four feet up in the air. This is less than four feet. The tubing will carry the water down the hill for now because we don't want to wet ourselves. Plop that pump in there. This is kind of supposed to help us speed run the water cycle, right? Where evaporation would carry the water uphill, we're just going to use a pump to force it. Melissa, you want to help me tape this into place for now? Oh wow, you cut such a small piece. Wait, you want it bigger? Are we running out of tape? Get a bigger piece of tape. There, ooh, okay. <laughs> that might be a little much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get ready to plug this in. So we want our pump to carry water to the top of our hill where gravity will pull it all the way back down and around and repeat. 
Let's do this. Woo! It stopped pumping? Sorry, I think I just need to plug it. Plug it back up again. Eat your heart out, Romans. Anyway, this whole setup transported water from nearby rivers. Let's assume they're somewhere uphill here. And it cascaded down the hill, giving Romans a really compact and efficient inland mill operation and making it easier to supply cities with food. Okay, now I need to put this all aside so that we can build the rest of the thing. We should empty up this tubing. Sorry, this is gonna be a little gross. Okay, now time for step two, building the water wheel. So in case you don't know, a water mill is made out of two general components, a water wheel and an output device. A water wheel is the thing that rotates, capturing hydropower, and an output device is anything you attach to the water wheel to utilize that energy. When the Romans picked up the water mill from the Greeks, they experimented with a few different designs. The water mills of Barbagall focused on the overshoot design. It's a wheel with buckets that collects water from an overhead source. Gravity acts on the water in those buckets, and rotates the wheel. Now this is a little bit more reliable and efficient than other designs like the undershoot design that simply relies on the power of the current. It's also why building the operation downhill was so important. It allowed them to maximize the number of wheels. So they likely used oak and elm to make the water wheels since these are more rot resistant, which is more important for a piece of wood that is constantly being submerged in water. However, we are going to be using base wood and popsicle sticks. All right, let's make some wheels. There we go. That's wheel one. Wheel number two. So both base wood and balsa wood are really common for scale models like this. I'm using base wood because it's just a little less porous and I don't want our water wheels turning into soggy crackers. Uh, let's cut these two things out. We got two. Now to form the buckets in between these to create the wheel, I'm just gonna cut up some popsicle sticks uh, and then I'm gonna glue them into an L. So we have all of our buckets and we are going to attach them to our wheel sides. So they would have used tree nails made out of holly to put this all together, but uh, that doesn't really work with our scale. So instead, we're just using waterproof glue. At least I think it's waterproof. Let's just attach that gently over there. Okay, I also set up our axle, which is going to act as our drive shaft, carrying the rotational force from our wheel to our gears. What do you mean? There's been 16 here the whole time. Is it movie magic or is it gaslighting? Moving on. Step three, getting in gear. So did you know that gears are some of humanity's oldest mechanical inventions? They can be traced back to China around 2600 BCE. That's 3000-ish years before our Roman water mills. So don't be too surprised that our Romans were pretty good at gearing. Let me just... So these water mills use two gears, a pit wheel cog that attaches to the end of our water wheel axle, and that spins a cage-shaped gear called a wallower. Traditionally, these gears would have been made of something like beech or apple wood, but I think we're just gonna use more base wood. We want the teeth of the gears to be really solid, so I figured we'd just insert a series of these picture framing nails. Drop them all on the floor. <laughs> So I'm just gonna insert these nails in a series around the perimeter. Uh-oh. Maybe we're not using base wood. New idea, foam board. Uh, we can cut the circle bits of, for the gears out of this foam board and then just stick the nails through. Uh, they're not making contact with water, so I'm not too worried about their porousness. Yeah, that's the right word. So this is going to be the base of our pit wheel cog and together these will form our lantern gear. So I'm just gonna use a piece of foam and I'm just gonna start poking nails through. Ooh, I should also probably cut a circle. There we go. 
So this is our pit wheel cog and it'll be attached to our water wheel. Um, and this is our cage gear. Let me show you kind of how it works. I'm just gonna hold it in place with this dowel for now. And notice how it rotates. So what does the lantern gear attach to? Well, that's for step four, making the mill. Now, remember when I said that water mills are made out of two parts, a water wheel and an output device? Now, the Romans used water wheels to power devices that sawed wood, pressed olives, cut marble, or worked iron, but their primary use was to mill grain and make flour. The Barbagall complex is estimated to have produced 25,000 grams of flour every single day. The milling process is pretty simple. You pass grain between two stone wheels called millstones that then grind the grain down to a powder. Now, now, I'm using air dry clay, but in reality, it would have been made from a strong and hard to source stone like granite, and then carefully carved out by a stone dresser. So the millstones sat on top of each other like this, but these are still pretty wet, so I'm gonna use some discs that I molded the other day. Now, the bottom was a solid disc that stayed still, but the top one was attached to our wallower. Now, if we remember the last step, this wallower would then rotate thanks to the water wheel. These millstones are currently pretty smooth, but they actually had specific carvings to help them do their job. Those carvings look like this. So let me just carve these into our stone. These channels that I'm carving here would help push the newly ground up grains, flour, uh, to the outer edges of the millstones. From there, it would pour out the sides, allowing it to be collected. <sighs> That's one millstone down. Let's do the other one. This was a really meticulous process, not only because carving stone is hard, but also, depending on the thickness of this carving, the flour could be too fine or too coarse. Now here's where it gets really whack. Smacking these two stones against each other repeatedly for hours risks creating sparks, and flour, I don't know if you know this, is highly flammable. So sometimes, water mills would literally just burn to the ground. Ta-da, here is just one set of millstones. Now it's time to do 15 more. Let's just cut here and go to step five. Putting it all together. All right, so we have got our hill. Now let's attach our water mills. So traditionally, the axles of the water wheels would be resting on wooden supports. However, when we did a little bit of a test run, uh, it added so much friction that the wheels wouldn't spin. So we're gonna be using some copper wire and popsicle sticks. Uh, it's just gonna be glued into here and create a bit of a loop, and then the water wheel axles will be resting in those loops. It reduces the friction enough to allow it to spin freely. So this is gonna take a while, so I'm calling for some help. Help. <laughs> the fact that you're wearing car hats is so funny. Let's get these things attached. We were just about to test the water on the water wheels. It just occurred that it, it it's gonna roll everywhere. Um, and the plan was initially to use tin foil until you rightfully brought up. The ancient Romans probably didn't have tin foil. So we're making these little popsicle stick troughs to have as like little basins underneath to help guide the water downwards to the next, to the next water wheel for the sake of those ancient techniques. So that's what we're at right now. Okay, so it is time. And we have our troughs. We're gonna do a test run with just getting the water wheels wheeling. Um, to give you guys a better view, I'm gonna rotate our hill this way. It also gives us a way to get rid of all of the water at the bottom. <laughs> it just fits. What should happen is that we'll have water from down there, pump all the way up here, fill this up. After this reaches a certain point, the water should start dripping out of these tubes and down our wheels. Oops, I immediately broke it. I'm plugging it in. We're reaching the tubes. It's gonna start having water come out soon. It's gonna go out. It's not rotating. Okay, so oh, oh, These are just not angled down enough. Fire. This water wheel is just not rotating, guys. Yeah, no matter how much water we put on it.
time? 8.45. Okay, uh, this is a stream remade with Sabrina and friends. Um, our only goal now is to get water from the top to the bottom. We're gonna keep lowering our standards till we can reach them. Ready, Gabby? Oh. We got one wheel, kind of doing one. Oh. Oh. Help it. Water's getting to the bottom. Water's getting to the bottom. We're eating bread. What? We eating bread tonight. <laughs> we got one wheel spinning consistently. Let's attach a gear to this. <laughs> All right, so we are dedicating to the right side of the super mill and we are only trying to get this water mill to work. Um, so we've sealed off that side. We're gonna glue in our pit wheel cog and I'm just going to hold up our mill because I'm very strong. <laughs> so, how's everyone's day going? Exactly as planned? I can't even lie at this point. <laughs> the goal is to get this spinning, to make this happen, but with water instead of my finger. Ready? Okay, if, if it rolls backwards, we still get red, Jane. <laughs> there we go, there we go, there we go. And then, come on, please, please, please give me bread. <laughs> Just one. Just one rotation. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's not gonna rotate based off water strength alone. Truly, we aren't even trying to make the Roman super mills. We're just trying to make one water mill. <laughs> uh, so we've got the water pump, full blast. We're gonna be trying to get this one wheel to rotate to get our pit wheel cog to rotate against our cage gear to get our, our, our millstone, to spin our top millstone so we can have bread. Are we ready, Gay? Ready. Okay, go. Oh my God, I think I did it once. And, wow, come on, one more, please. You got one more in you, please. This milling operation was incredible for its time. We've also added mill houses to cover up our shame. But producing the same amount of flour using the labor of enslaved people would have been difficult, if not impossible given the shortage around 3rd century CE. Fortunately for the Romans, they were able to combine their knowledge and natural resources to create a factory that could provide food for a whole city, no enslaved people required, which is a good thing. It also reminds me of this general fear some people have about robots taking our jobs. Certainly it's a complex topic, but sometimes I kind of want a robot to take my job. If you're watching this, you have probably never had to worry about who milled your flour. And that isn't a bad thing because it turns out milling flour is hard. Working smarter, not harder, can free us up to do the things we actually care about, like learning something new or spending time with loved ones, or watching a YouTube video. Thanks for watching this chaos.